Okay, I'm a bit nasally because I'm basically allergic to Florida and I live in Florida, so that is awesome. But today I'm gonna to share a very quick video with you of my five five-star reads fiction for 2022. Yes, I've only rated five of them five stars. Why? Because I'm just you look at me and see that I'm the type of girl you're not really that used to. Hey readers. Welcome back. If you're brand new to my channel, my name is Arlene with Arlene and Company. And today I am going to show you, as I said, my five five star fictional reads of the year. Yes, there was only five of them that I rated a five star because I'm so stingy and I will have them lose half a point over the stupidest thing for other people. But it wasn't stupid to me. Like, you know, if you let me down at the end, off with a half a point. I don't know. I'm kind of really stingy. Whereas my friend Kelly from Beaches and Rage, she is just like, you get a five star, you get a five star, you get a five star. I'm so not that person, but that doesn't mean that they weren't fantastic reads. We did a live and we hashed out over 30 titles that were our favorite reads of 2022. Nonfiction, fiction, several different genres from middle grade, YA, adult fiction, mystery, dark academia, like everything, like all genres you can think of. Um, we went over it. I'm going to link that live in the description of the box down below if you want to really just have a snack, probably a meal because it's a long one, and just sit with us as we talk about a lot of books and then get your TBR list ready because we went over a lot. But we didn't discuss it based on star value or anything like that. So right now I'm just going to give you a quick video and discuss five stars. All right, so the first one I'm gonna go over is one that I have not really talked about. Like I only talked about it a little bit and I can't believe that I forgot to even include it in my top reads reel over on IG. Like I have no idea how that happened because it was one of my only five stars. Not only, but it's like, you know, one of five. So how the heck did I miss that? I have no idea, but we're gonna talk about it now. And that was Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Whitson. Now she is the author of You're Not Familiar, Brown Girl Dreaming. So, you know, if you have like novel studies or anything like that, but you know, you've, you've read it um, or any, you know, it's just part of like so many different curriculum. And right, it's a short novel. It's probably like it's 200 pages, 200 and something pages or so, um, I wanna say. So it, it was a quick read, but in those like minimum pages, there was so much jam packed. There was like an evolution of different family legacy and um, emotions and um, different, just different journeys. And so much was expressed in those few pages. And it was an easy five um, star read for me because it, I just thought it was purely just fantastic. Um, it starts with the character Melody in her 16, I think it was her 16th birthday or maybe her just her 16th um, coming of age ceremony. It kind of gave me the Stars Hollow vibe a little bit <laughs> there. And you know, like, you know, Lorelai is going to the cotillion, but the cotillion, she never makes it to the cotillion because you, you know, find out that she's pregnant and the dress doesn't fit. Anyways, it had that similar vibe too. So she is wearing the dress that was meant for her mother 16 years prior um, because her mom was a, a teen mom, right? I wanted to say it was, but it, it goes back and forth in time, uh, you know, with her mom, with um, different characters. And also kind of just like builds up that family legacy of how they arrived to the point where they were. Even in Tulsa, uh, including Tulsa Massacre of 1921, of how her family moved from the South and ended up in Brooklyn. Um, so it goes like way back and then way forward um, and explores so much, like so, so much, especially that mo mother-daughter relationship, which was pretty extreme to, uh, um, at first, you know. Um, I can't ruin it for you, I can't tell you too much. But there was just like, there was a lot and there was a lot of complexity to it, um, which I thought was just so beautifully uh, expressed and seamlessly. And it was very lyr lyrical to read. Um, but that was Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. And it was just such an easy uh, five star read for me. I mean, it was just, you know, how you arrived to this point, what made you into that person and how it just kind of like, you know, passes on from generation to generation. Um, do we break the cycles? How do the cycles break the healing process? I, it was just such a fantastic read. So I would definitely recommend that if you have not read it, Red at the Bone is a must read for you and it will be a quick read for you. Um, another one, I did actually do a full um, review of this because I was so impacted by it that I, I needed like a day to think about what I wanted to put in writing. And that was Yellow Wife. Yellow Wife by uh, Sakeo um, Johnson. 
And I'm telling you, whatever she writes, I will pick up. I don't, I don't care what it is. I mean, it could be on instructions on a lawnmower. I don't care, but I'm going to pick it up. Um, Yellow Wife I have talked about several times, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but it does uh, uh, as a mixed with. individual. Her, her, her father was the plantation owner, so she was half white. And that exploration, because a lot of the stories and things that we read, we don't really see the perspective of like, if you were a mixed individual at that time and coming from a mixed family as such as mine, that was something of very big interest to me. Obviously it's a historical fiction, but it is based on real characters and real events. So there is obviously some liberty taken, but um, she does end up marrying a jailer, um, you know, and she's still enslaved. So it wasn't by choice. Um, and having his children and exploring everything that she went through and being enslaved in a whole d different way. So whether some thought that she had it easier or not, this just explores something so raw and you really need like a palate cleanser in between because it is a difficult read. It's very difficult to read it. Um, it she really speaks in that historical context and um, it, it, it's hard and, and it's vivid. Um, the abuse, the, the hatred, everything is so, so vivid. And you sometimes you just take a pause to read, it. like you really need that. Um, so Yellow Wife is something that I think is awesome for a book club read as well, because it's gonna stem a lot of different conversations and important ones. And I also really, actually think this is a book that no matter what color you are, you should read it. Um, so Yellow Wife, it, I think, will spark a lot of um, important conversations and as well as um, spark your interest to learn more. Also read, um, which was my uh, one of my far stories. It's so depressing, which <laughs> makes sense because it's based on the Depression era. And that was The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. Now, I have heard about Kristen Hanna for a while. I had not read any of her novels, and this was the first one. That was not my last one I read by her. I really wasn't taken back by any of the other, I know other people were like, oh, read The Nightingale, and I just couldn't get into it. Uh, maybe it was just not the right time. I'm a mood reader, so I really have to be in a certain mood um, to, to appreciate certain titles or I'll just drop it and then move on to something else that fits my current flavor of the day. Um, so The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna is, uh, follows the journey of this um, family of this woman um, as she gets pregnant and Basically, the uh, the man ends up marrying her just like, you know, to do right by her. And it's just like pretty sad from there. Um, so it wasn't like a, a love marriage or, or anything like that. But it goes through, obviously, this is a historical fiction. It goes through the Depression era, what they specifically went through. Um, all kinds. I, I don't want to ruin it for you, um, but it... It's one of those stories, if you are in the mood of being heartbroken and having your heart like ripped out and stepped on, just read The Four Winds because that is it. And when you, and it's a thick read, right? Um, and when you get through the entire book and you get to, um, to the end and you think everything's gonna be wrapped up in a bow. <sighs> oh my goodness. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. The Four Ruins is definitely something I would recommend, but you definitely have to be in the mood to be heartbroken. Um, Shed a few tears. One is, and I know you guys probably have seen it like 30,000 times. And uh, this this is like a must buy author for me now, like anything she writes. And I've um, actually rated most of what I read from her like four and a half stars already. And I'm like, I still have a couple more of her novels to really like finish all of them. And that's Ruta Sapetti, Salt to the Sea. The other ones were library copies. That's why you just saw like the picture pop up. Um, and uh, I've talked about this numerous times, so I'm not gonna get into this. It's like winter 1945, four teenagers, four secrets. They are, are um, you know, leaving uh, on the uh, Gustav. It's like the biggest marine um, tragedy um, at sea. People um, think, you know, Titanic, but this was like way worse, like 9,000 souls were lost or something like that. It was, it was really, really bad. But this book, y'all, <laughs> I was like several thousand feet above the ground when I was reading this, I was on a plane. And you know, it just starts 
with each character's point of view, right? And the chapters are short, but not too short. And they're just very impactful. They just put you right there. She has this ability um, to not only like bring you into this historical fiction, but you know that they're so closely interweb with the actual event. The amount of research and homework that she does before writing these novels is so evident and so impressive and appreciate it. And I also love that not I mean that's that is a good thing but she has a personal connection so like that own voice um, perspective from her family um so I mean it's just like guilt is a hunter that's how it starts my uh, my conscience mocked me picking fights like a um, petulant child it is all your fault the voice whispered anyways but like the way that each chapter ended at the beginning I can tell you this is with the word bang it's like Oh, do you, who died? <laughs> What's going on? Like, it just starts right there. So when somebody has like an opening hook that I'm just like, well, I will keep reading you, then you got my attention. So I devour this book in one sitting and I could not get enough. And I just thought, oh my goodness, this writer, like you got me, you, you, I am a fan for life. Um, so Ruta Sapetti, she's also an author of Between the Shades. I read, um, let's see, I have a few. Must Betray You, which I thought was excellent. So about like four and a half stars for me. Was it as good as Salt to the Sea to me? Um, not as great, but it was an excellent read. I read that with a book club with Emily um from build your library um i also read out of the easy which is based in new orleans i thought it was fantastic i had like a um a four and a half stars for that one and um so i've read those three novels and i'm still trying to read the other two of hers and i will go from there and i'll tell you uh, what i think about them as well but um for my one, five star read from one of my favorite authors now is rudis petty's um salt to the sea and uh their journey uh um, you know nazi germany and every it's just it, it pulls at every string you will have um and i have this cover which i'm so grateful for and this was like a used copy that i bought so i was i really love it i don't know if you see the embossed um mark on it but i really love this copy. You know, whoever's watching this but i'm not a huge fan of big thick books <laughs> <laughs> I kind of just like, you know, maybe it's just my ADHD, but I like need to see it end in sight, like chop it up for me so I can feel like I accomplished something and then, you know, go on to book two or whatever. So this is a thicker, really read that many um, fictions with like, you know, based in Korea and going from there. And this goes from beginning in the 13, 1900s through multiple generations of one single family. And... That is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This is fantastic. I have talked about this earlier in the year um, over on IG. <sighs> I was like, I, I, I just, I needed, this was one of these weird reads. Okay, let, how do I put this? All right, this is one of those reads where um, you would think, okay, it's a far star read. You loved it so much, so you want a book too. I don't actually. I think it ended where it was supposed to end, and I think it needed to end where it ended. And the story has been told, the journey has been uh, experienced, and I want to cherish it as is. So there does not need to be a book too. I mean, you can see it's pretty thick, but I was I sad when it was over. I felt like I went through like an emotional process. Like I knew this family, I knew this family. And there were just so many different elements to it. Um, you know, and you know, there were some spicy moments as well. A lot of different things when you're dealing with one specific family and they're, um, you know, as they go into Japan, the discrimination that they experience, all the hardships and everything else, everything that every single character I don't believe there was a single character here that you did not end up caring about. Whether you didn't like them or not, you cared about what is happening or wanting to know what's happening with them um, and following their story. Um, and there were several characters, but I did not find it hard to I'll tell you this. There was a moment I put this book down and I just needed, 
I needed to decompress. I was just like, I was on a tra certain chapter and I was like, I'm numb. What just happened? <laughs> what? Um, I, ha I think I, it, it's a TV show now, right? I, I'm not sure if I have it. It's a certain streaming service. I want to say it's a TV show now um, or series of some sort. Um, and I do want to watch that, though. I want to see how closely they're related to it. Um, I don't know if I'm ready to reopen those wounds, but... This, if you read nothing else, okay, I absolutely adore every single book I shared with you. Definitely a five-star read. I love each and every one of them. But if you only have time for one of the five that I show you, read Pachinko, okay? Just, just read oh, Pachinko. Read Pachinko. Um, and that is my five for five <laughs> stars and in fiction read. So what were your top reads what was your five stars reads of 2022 in the comments on down below i would love to know because we love to add endless amounts of tbr because somehow we think we have several lifetimes to read it, it to the start. it, was that would be nice. it would be nice it would be nice all right if you enjoyed this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up i will see you guys next time. i never backed away i played for